Welcome to Return to Home with Michelle Bruxton. Today we're going to go all the way back a hundred years to our great, maybe great grandma's kitchen where she was probably cooking biscuits and gravy over a wood stove. We're going to make sausage gravy in our cast iron skillet and I'm going to teach you how to make my fluffy, perfect, crispy biscuits that'll be just perfect for soaking up that gravy. I can't wait to meet you right back here in just a few minutes as we get set up to use our cast iron skillet. The first thing let's do is get started on our biscuits because they're going to need time to rise and bake. Our gravy won't take that long. So first, let's do our yeast. Now I've already got a half a cup of warm water in my mug. I'm going to add to that my yeast. Now remember, if you've already opened your jar of yeast, put it back in the fridge to store it or else it won't rise right the next time. Next, we're going to add a little bit of sugar because we know that yeast is hungry and it needs sugar. Perfect. And then we're gonna just give it a little stir and set it to the side. Now you wanna put your yeast in something that gives it plenty of room and space to bubble. So you can see that I've got plenty of room in this cup for that to happen. So we'll just set that over to the side. Next, we're gonna add our flour mixture. So to our large bowl, we'll add flour. baking powder, baking soda, and salt. We'll add a fourth of a cup of sugar. One quarter cup of softened butter. A pinch of salt. and we're going to make a cup of buttermilk. Now you know how I do. I just add lemon to my buttermilk to my milk at home to make buttermilk because I don't keep buttermilk at home. So this is how you turn any milk into buttermilk. You can add just a little bit of lemon juice or white vinegar. That's plenty. Give it a little stir. And now you've got buttermilk. So we'll sift together our dry ingredients. Next, I'll add an egg-sized, approximately an egg-sized dollop of shortening. And then we'll just mix this all together. Now, if y'all aren't super sciencey, I'm gonna teach you something sciencey. So the process by which all of this happens is called an endothermic reaction. Now, why do I know that? And why does that matter? Well, there is quite a bit of science and physics that happens in baking. And how do I know that, you ask? Well, we just happen to participate in what's called Picnic in the Park here at Missouri S&T. They have a wonderful STEM program that's for students kindergarten through 12th grade. And you know, we're located in Missouri, which is right in the middle of the United States. So it's so handy. If your kids are looking for a great summer program, they can have access to all kinds of technology, science, math, engineering, and it can be everything from building robotics to learning about how things bubble up and how things are gonna be working today in the future and the history of where we've come from. Missouri Science Technology has been around for a long time and they have a great history of building things that you and I use today. Their STEM program and their summer camps are something that we are really proud of in our community. And I would love to see you come to the market whenever you drop your kids off at summer camp. We have so many families that stop by Ozark Farms as you bring your kids from all over the country to Missouri s and STEM camps in the summer. Make sure you stop by and see us and maybe we'll have some biscuits and gravy. So now you can see that that's broken up into small little pieces and evenly divided among the flour. So now we'll add the buttermilk that we just made. I'm gonna make a well in the center of my flour and I'll add 
my buttermilk, and I'll also add my yeast mixture. And just working our way from the inside out, we're gonna drag our flour into the, uh, the moisture, just like this. This is one of my favorite biscuit recipes. Sometimes they're called angel biscuits. Some people just call them southern biscuits, but they're just a wonderful biscuit recipe to have on hand. I always start out with a little bit of a wetter dough and then add flour as needed. Now it's very rainy here today, so you're gonna notice this dough has turned out very wet, which is absolutely fine. We're going to add a little flour and I'm gonna show you what to do. Just add flour a little at a time until it gets to the consistency that you can actually put it on the counter and roll it out. I like to use my hands. We'll just add flour a handful at a time until it starts to ball up. Notice I'm dragging my fork through the dough, not too much at a time. We wanna make sure the flour is making its way inside the dough ball. We're getting really close now. I think that's gonna be plenty of flour. Okay, we're ready to put this on the counter and roll it out. I'm just gonna use my surface right here. We wanna make sure we have plenty of flour on our surface. And we'll just put our biscuit dough right on the surface here. If it's still a little wet, don't worry about that at all. You can always add flour. You know, there's different schools of thought about flour. Some people like to add their flour in the bowl. I like to add my flour on the counter because it gives me more control over the finished product. A little more flour, flour my hands, and we're just gonna pat this dough out making sure that we're not sticking on the bottom anywhere. Looking great. This is a really nice soft dough, much softer than your typical biscuit dough because it's got yeast in it. Let's bring our edges in and let's get ready to cut out some biscuits. Now for this particular day, normally I would use my big jar lid for biscuits. Today, I'd like to have some smaller biscuits because I'd like crispy, crunchy biscuits. So we're going to use our smaller jar lid. We just start at the edge, push down, and move it over to the side. Pop it out the center. This will yield, this recipe yields about 12 smaller biscuits or six of the large jar lid biscuits. The larger jar lid is going to give you softer, bigger insides. This is gonna give you smaller, crispier biscuits. Once we have all of these cut out, we'll put them in our cast iron skillet that's already lined with butter, and we're gonna let these rise for about an hour before baking. If you find that your jar lid starts to stick, just throw some flour on your counter and wiggle your lid around it just a little bit and it'll stop it from sticking right away. Those are feeling really nice. Now remember, with all your little pieces that are left over at the end, you just pile them up on top of each other and make a big tall tower. 
get fl plenty of flour on the bottom and then press it all down. It's important that you put them all on top of each other, otherwise it'll just be a bunch of pieces. And then once you flip it over, you've got a nice biscuit. Perfect. So that gave us, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Today it gave us eleven biscuits instead of twelve. We're going to put these in our butter and cast iron skillet. We're going to let these raise for one hour in a warm corner of your kitchen. And then next, let's get started on our biscuits and gravy. Now that our biscuits are raised and in the oven and we've brushed the tops with heavy cream to make them nice and crispy, let's go ahead and make our sausage gravy. The first thing we'll do is put our sausage in our cast iron skillet. Now I already have my cast iron skillet on a medium heat. We'll break up our sausage into small pieces. And let that get nice and brown. The next thing we'll do is add a little salt and a little pepper. I really like to add my spices when the meat is cooking. I think it absorbs the spices better and ends up with a better overall taste. Now you'll notice I touch my cast iron handles in the beginning of cooking. Once your cast iron gets hot enough, you want to be very careful about touching your handles because they do get hot. We're going to cook this sausage and let it get nice and crispy on the bottom. And then we're going to drain it. Now that our sausage is all ready to go, I've noticed that it doesn't have quite as much grease in it as I like to start with. And so I thought I'd just show you what I do whenever that happens. You know, you can add canola oil, you can add vegetable oil. You know me, I'm gonna add a little butter. So let's add just a little pat of butter into our mix. We're gonna let this butter melt down and then we're gonna put some flour in. Now how much butter you add really depends on how much gravy you wanna end up with. I'd like to end up with quite a bit of gravy because I've got some hungry kids that are wanting to have biscuits and gravy. We're just gonna stir that butter around and get our, all of our sausage really wet. Now you've noticed that I left my sausage in big pieces. You can crumple up your sausage if you'd like into smaller pieces. I like for my biscuits and gravy to be made with big sausage. Now next, let's add our flour. We're gonna soak up all of that grease that we just made. And we're gonna let it get nice and brown. Now, you know, when we made chicken gravy the other day, you and I, we took all the meat out and we made milk gravy from the drippings. This is a little bit different. We're adding the flour right to the meat and we're soaking up the grease. You're gonna love the end result, I promise you. See that grease in the bottom of the pan? We're browning that just like we did our chicken gravy. I'm gonna add a little more flour. Now the flour is gonna act as a thickening agent for your milk, whenever you put your milk in. How much flour you add really just depends on how much meat you cooked and how much gravy you're going to make and how thick you're gonna want it. You can really just play it by ear, but let it get nice and brown. That's really starting to look nice. 
Once you can see that your flour is starting to get nice and brown on the bottom of your pan and you're, you've got this nice thick coating on all of your meat, it's time to add your milk. And I add mine right to the edge of my pan. Just a little at a time. And pretty soon you'll start to notice your milk is going to turn a nice seasoned color as all of that seasoning comes back off of your sausage into your milk gravy. I start with a little bit of milk because I do want it to make a roux in the bottom of my pan and then I'll add more milk as that roux thickens. See how that's doing just like that? Now we're gonna add more milk. I like a nice brown sausage gravy. And so I want that to make a roux in the bottom. We're just gonna keep working the bottom of our pan nice and gently and getting all of that nice coating off the bottom of our pan. I'm gonna turn my fire down just a little bit and keep adding a little more milk. I'm really looking forward to sharing this biscuits and gravy with y'all. And I hope that this makes it a little easier for you to make biscuits and gravy with your family. Our biscuits are done. They're ready to go. And so as soon as our gravy's ready, we're going to dish them up on the plate and share some biscuits and gravy together. I'm gonna give this just a quick stir and then let's get some biscuits out of our, um, out of our pan here. I've got a plate ready. And there's a couple different ways my kids like to have their biscuits. One is with biscuits and gravy. One is with Madigan's hazelnut spread. So let's make that first. Now, I don't know if you like corner biscuits or middle biscuits, but let's start with a middle biscuit for the hazelnut spread. These are so nice and flaky. They're just delicious. So we'll open this nice biscuit up. So nice. And let's put some hazelnut spread on here. Check our gravy every once in a while to make sure it's coming along nicely. Wonderful. That's really yummy. Let's put some hazelnut spread right on our biscuit. I can't wait to dig into that. Now, let's make our biscuits and gravy. Now, if you at any point decide that you'd like to have thicker gravy or thinner gravy, you can adjust by adding a little more flour or a little more milk. The milk will make it thinner and the flour will make it thicker. You know I like to use whole milk for things, so I've used whole milk in this recipe. Now for biscuits and gravy, I do like to use a corner piece biscuit because I, you know I like crispy biscuits. So we're going to pull out a corner piece biscuit. Isn't that nice? We'll open this up, and in fact, we might just get two biscuits out. Let's see, let's get this one. These are so nice and fluffy. Perfect. Our gravy's really coming along nice. I've turned my fire all the way down to a simmer now because I'm ready for it to stop cooking. 
Let's add some gravy to these delicious biscuits. I really hope that you've enjoyed making homemade biscuits and sausage gravy with me today. And I hope that you'll join me next time in Return to Home with Michelle Broxson as we go back a hundred years and explore vintage recipe favorites right here in my farm kitchen at Ozark Farms. For more information about these recipes and our farm, visit us at returntohome.org or email me at hello at ozarkfarms.org. See you soon.